professor with the Center for Machine Vision and Signal Analysis CMBS University of Oslo, Finland, where she has been a major uh, senior researcher since 2005 and an associate professor since 2014. She received a PhD degree in computer science from the Chinese Academy of Science, Beijing, China in 2005. She got the academy postdoctoral position in 2007. And in 2011, she was selected to the highly competitive academy research fellow position. She has authored or co-authored more than 230 papers in journals and conferences and has served as a reviewer for many journals and conferences. Her papers have currently over 12,500 citations in Google Scholar with H index of 52. She is co-program chair of ACM International Conference on Multimodal Interaction uh, 2021, a special session of panel chairs for uh, FG2023, and general chair for ICBA 2020. She was general chair for ICBA 2019, co-chair for late, break, uh, late breaking results of ICMI 2019, co-publicity chair for FG 2018, has served as the area chair for several conferences and is associate editor for pattern recognition, interpret transaction on, on circuits and systems for video technology and image and vision computing journals. She has lectures, tutorials at FG 2018, ICPR 2006, ICCB 2009, and SCIA 2019, and authored or edited three books and eight special issues in journals. Professor Zhao uh, was a co-chair of 17 international workshops or special sessions in top venues such as CBPR, ICCB, ECCB, ACCB, and FG. Her students and researchers are frequent recipient of very prestigious and highly competitive fellowships, such as Academia Finland postdoctoral position, the Nokia Scholarship Foundation, uh, and Diva Research uh, Fellowship, Town Attorney Research Funding, Caltech Foundation grants, and Yorma Dolila grant. She's a senior member for IEEE. Her current research interests include image and video descriptors, gate analysis, dynamic texture recognition, facial expression recognition, human motion analysis, and uh, person identification. Her research has been reported by Finnish TV pro programs such as Ule Uxi, newspapers such as Kaleva, and MIT Technology Review. So today, she's going to give uh, one lecture on remote uh, heart rate measure from videos. So now we are ready to listen to her lecture. And I ask the audience if they have any question, please write it in the chat section. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This is Guo Ying Zhao from the University of Oulu, Finland. Uh, it's my pleasure to be invited to give a talk in the RTM Advanced School on Computing Artificial Intelligence. I'm going to talk about the research on remote heart rate measure from video analysis, the methods and the, the applications. I'm now starting to share my slides and we can discuss more in the Q&A session. Faith is very special for us, for us humans. And faith perception may be the most developed visual perceptual skills in humans. Infants prefer to look at faces from shortly after birth. Most people spend more time looking at faces than at any other types of objects. Given a a face picture, as shown in this slide, we can actually get lots of information. For example, gender, is the people male or female? And age, how old is she? Identity, so who she is? 
ethnicity, age, shape, age, or concussion, the emotion, is she happy or not? Anything else that we can get from the face? How about the heart rate? Is that possible? Actually, there are many ways to measure the heart rate. For example, we could just use our finger counting from the neck or wrist. Uh, there are also the new device or apps that can measure the heart rate from our chest, finger, or ear. While nowadays in hospital, the ECG or the electrocardiogram is still the most common approach used by doctors for heart activity measurement. It's not new, but it's still the most accurate golden standard until today. So we have so many products for measuring the heart rate. Are we satisfied? And the problems with all these products are that they all need special instruments and need to be attached to the human body. So considering the scenarios like show in this slide, so people communicate with each other uh, online or with a big distance. Is it possible to put any contact device for getting the heart rate? It's probably very hard and not practical. So the keywords for all these cases are firstly, people are remotely connected, communicated with each other. And uh, camera would be the only convenient sensors to be used. So could we measure and get the heart rate, heart rate activity from just the face video analysis? That is the talk for today. And uh, I will talk about it from these five aspects. The first is the handcrafted method uh, the researchers have proposed to getting the heart rate, the average heart rate. And secondly, is a new OBF data that we have collected can be used for average heart rate, but also the heart rate variability and uh, even for the medical um, uh, purpose. And after that, uh, I'm going to tell about some deep learning based method. And then the actual fibrillation, fibrillation detection with remote heart rate measure. And finally, is a summary. And here I put OBF data set uh, right after the handcrafted method. That's because in the deep learning based method, uh, this database uh, is used for some experiments. So I think it would be good to uh, have some knowledge um, before we uh, go into uh, the deep learning method, um, which use, uses also this data set. So let's move to the handcrafted method. The heart rate can be measured from face, face values. The existing method can be divided into two categories. The first category is motion-based method. And the theory behind it is that uh, there is subtle head oscillation that is the head movement in the vertical direction caused by cardiovascular circulation due to the gravity. So let's see, this is the video uh, recorded by uh, our ordinary camera. And this is the video after applying uh, the magnification method. So with that, 
the very subtle vertical movement can be seen. The second category is color-based methods. That is, the blood volume of microvascular changes together with the cardio pulse. Again, this video actually is now playing. It's recorded by our camera. And then, after applying magnification method, we can see the color, skin color changes systematically and that is relevant to the pulse. So still, people might ask, so why, why we can um, get the heart rate from, from the skin color changes? That's because when our heart is beating and uh, there are more blood in our blood vessel, uh, so the red color uh, absorb more green, color and reflect more red color. So it causes the very subtle skin color changes and uh, which can be shown in the shallow blood vessels. That is why we could, by analyzing the subtle, very small color changes and to find out the signals which are relevant to the heart beating. The early method only can work when the situation is strictly controlled. For example, people need to be very still, keep still during the measurement, and the environment needs to be stable, and there shouldn't be any uh, for example, the illumination changes and people cannot talk, cannot move at all. But we know in realistic situations like in human computer interaction, and surely people can move naturally. And there can be the rigid head movement, you turn your head, and there can be non rigid movement. Like people can talk, so mouth is moving. People can smile, can have other different facial expressions, and there are no rigid facial muscle movement. As well, the environment can change. Illumination can vary. So we need the method to deal with the different kinds of noisy raw data. We have proposed a color-based method which is able to work with all of these factors. With the input face video sequences, after uh, several handcrafted steps, and finally we can get and input the average output, the average heart rate. The first step is to detect face and check a uh, reliable face region. Here, a uh, descriptive response map fitting is applied to uh, locate and track uh, facial landmarks. And then we determine uh, a robust facial region as shown here in this picture, this mask area as the facial region and later to be used for the heart rate signal. In the second step uh, is to remove the illumination effects. When illumination changes, uh, it's assumed that it affects uh, the illumination in our face, it affects the same way to our background. So we take part of the background as reference uh, and we use the normalized least mean square filter to eliminate the fact of the illumination. Here the first row shows the original um, signal from the gray channel and the second row shows the signal from the back background and the third row uh, shows the filter, the signal. 
we can see the noise caused by illumination variations is reduced and, and there the pulse becomes more visible. Then we consider the non-regent uh, movement. So if people are talking, uh, making facial expressions, there are uh, muscle, facial muscle movement. Actually, uh, they can be the big, very big noise when uh, we are uh, thinking just the subtle skin color changes relevant to heart rate. So here we uh, segment the whole signal into uh, many small segments. And inside each segment, the mean and the standard deviation are calculated. If there is a large change of standard deviation, it's believed that there is something happening which are not relevant to heart rate beating, to heart beating. Uh, simply, we just remove those segments and reconcatenate the remaining part. Since that part with the big standard deviation is considered to be an unreliable animal. Uh, since we uh, are aiming to get average heart rate, so removing some part, some segment wouldn't matter for the average heart rate measure. In the uh, step four, um, several um, classical temporal filtering are uh, uh, exploited, like the trending filter, moving average filter. Uh, then we use um, the frequency with the maximum um, power response as the heart rate frequency. In the experiments, uh, since uh, there was no available uh, public data set at that time when we proposed the method, we firstly um, collected an easy data set by ourselves. We call it the video HR database. Um, the camera was uh, built in um, camera of an iPad. Uh, 30 frames per second uh, Mm, with uh, the resolution of 640 uh, by um, 480 were recorded. As well, we need to get the ground truth heart rate. So a polar HR monitor system is used for that purpose. And the 10 subjects were enrolled for data collection. Uh, that is easy data set because people kept still and uh, there is nothing um, changed uh, in the data collection. But uh, we would like to um, uh, carry out experiments in some realistic uh, challenging data set. So Mahanab HCR data set was considered. It's a public multimodal data set. Uh, collected actually for multimodal emotion analysis. But because it has people's video recorded and it has ECG recorded, so we have thought that it's suitable also for this task. Uh, and the ECG signals were recorded use the three sensors uh, attached to the participant's body. And finally, uh, 527 facial videos from 27 subjects and their corresponding ECG signals are used for the experiments. Since for uh, Namahonob HCR data set, uh, people um, were watching the movies and uh, because of the content of the movie, people um, may smile, may talk a little bit, uh, so there are indeed uh, some movement and also there are the illumination changes caused by the movie uh, playing. Let's see the results. In the easy data, it's well controlled. So all the methods get a very good 
results. But when we moved to the challenge Mahanoba Nova database, and it can be seen that the early method have a large errors, but our method decrease the error substantially, showing its robustness. This is a demo showing how this method is working. Uh, this is the video from Mahanoda data set. The lady was watching a movie. And we detect face area, get landmarks, and determine a reliable region. And that part is used as background uh, reference. Mm, and here, the upper row shows the raw PPG from the mask area. Second row shows the background reference. And then over here, um, the red curve gives us result from uh, the measured pulse from uh, the videos. And uh, uh, this blue curve shows the ground truth. And we can see that uh, the heart rate measured from videos can well follow the changes in the pulse. Now uh, we move to the OBF dataset acquirement. Mm, so uh, let's take uh, this picture, the root lamp as an example. And we see there is a root, and before, we only know there are, for example, all together uh, 20 lamps on this road. But now we want to know the location of each lamp, the distance between them, maybe also their height, shape, and so on. So back to the power signal. The previous signals only tell us there are probably Mm, 80 beats per second uh, per minute. But now we need more details. We need to locate each individual heartbeat, compute the interval between two peaks. Then we can analyze the statistic information like the mean, the standard deviation of interval, all frequency features, and so on. And this is so-called heart rate variability. Heart rate variability analysis let us know how well the heart is functioning and it's a very important index in many clinical usage, like in the diagnosis of some heart diseases. So, The motivation of this, um, this work and this new data set uh, is as this figure shows. Given an input video, the face video, the prior study only got the average heart rate, like here, 75 beats bit per minute. Now we hope to get more precise information of heart rate variability, and then we can demonstrate the possibility of using the methods for more applications, like in medical applications for heart disease detection. We pick the atrial fibrillation as the application usage. What is atrial fibrillation, the AF? It's the most common type of the arrhythmia, and which means the heart is beating very fast with irregular speed. This figure compares the ECG of a healthy per person on the upper row with a typical atrial fibrillation patients on the lower row. And it's characterized by the rapid and the irregular beating of the atrial. 
why we chose AI for our study? Firstly, because it has high incidence. It affects two to three percent of the population. It may lead to blood clot, stroke, etc. So the early detection and intervention is very crucial for good treatment. But uh, it's quite hard to catch it in early stage. Many patients told that they don't have any symptoms at all. Even for some of them in the early stage, they felt something wrong. Even they visited the doctor in a hospital, a short time ECG is taken. It may show a normal heart rate pattern in short time ECG. And only in the long time, for example, the days on continuous ECG recording, some in sometime, some part, the irregular heart, heart rate pattern may be found showing the possibility of AF. So it would be valuable if there is more convenient AF detection approach that people can even do self checkup at home. So we are thinking if we could have uh, the method which is able to detect the heart rate variability, the bit to bit interval from video analysis, uh, that would bring uh, very big potentials. We could have cameras here and there in supermarket, in library, in waiting rooms, and also in our smart devices. We, we can use the cameras there as a mirror. And we can check our heart rate at any times we want. With such convenient and very frequent use of the um, smart methods, it definitely increases the possibility to catch the irregular heart beating in the early stage. To achieve our goal, the very first challenge we are facing is the data. We need a data, data set that includes facial videos, ground truth by signals of healthy people and of the atrial fibrillation patients. So we put lots of effort to build a team, including computer vision re researchers, bicycle researchers, cardiological doctors, nurses for data collection. Here in this figure, it shows the setup for our data collection. And we set it in a, a room in university hospital. And its data collection has been done with the collaboration uh, uh, of the researchers in our university hospital. We have uh, in RGB camera, the infrared camera, active light, uh, and people, healthy people and patients sit in front of those cameras about one a meter distant. Uh, as well, we have bar devices to record ECG, blood volume, pulse, respiration, frequency, for example, as the ground truth. Here, the table shows the equipment we have used for the data recording. Computer, RGB camera, near infrared camera, LED lights, by signal acquisition sensor, ECG sensor, resp uh, respiration frequency belt, the blood volume pulse sensor, all of them are synchronized. And we have enrolled 100 healthy people and 138 atrial fibrillation patients. And uh, the participants cover a wide range of age from different countries, which means, for example, the variance of the skin colors. For the patients, they come from uh, both Finland and China.
Here is the data composition. Uh, this is an example on color camera captured video. This is near infrared, near infrared camera captured video. ECG, BVP, and the respiration signal as well. For the healthy people, we uh, captured firstly on uh, the five minutes video when people are in resting state. Um, so they are um, calm. Uh, and uh, then we ask them to do some uh, exercises to induce quick, high heart rate. And after the exercises, another five minutes uh, video sequences are recorded, which definitely have the um, increased heart rate. And for AF patients, um, after they visit a doctor, before treatment, five minutes video sequences are recorded. And after the treatment, and for most of them, the heart rate could be close to normal. And then we capture another five minutes video sequences. And in total, um, 2,318 minutes videos are um, obtained together with their corresponding ECG, BVP, and the respiration rate. Here, the figure shows um, the method of framework uh, that we employed to evaluate uh, the database ads uh, for the um, baseline results. It's a color-based approach, uh, followed the idea in post 2011's work with some modifications to achieve more stable results. This is a basic, a simple framework for heart rate variability measure. The purpose here is just to provide the baseline result for future comparison. We run this, uh, several different experiments on the collected data to illustrate the challenges on three levels. The first is to evaluate how well uh, the method can measure the average heart rate. And secondly, it's for um, evaluate the accurate of the heart rate variability features from video analysis. And the third one is how, uh, how well the method can be used for remote artery fibrillation detection. Here I briefly explain some results and findings. Uh, and uh, firstly, we compared the heart rate measured um, from the face, the average heart rate, from face to the ground truth of ECG. Uh, here, just the healthy um, people's data are used. We evaluated the RGB and the near infrared data separately. Here is the result of the RGB data. Uh, the error on the y axis versus the ground truth um, heart rate on the x axis. We got a pretty good performance, and most of the cases with very small error rate. That means the average heart, heart rate measure is a relatively simple task on this data. We as well divide uh, the data into uh, uh, three even groups by the skin colors, as shown here as uh, in different uh, <coughs> color dots. Uh, and you may notice the cases with large errors are mostly with uh, the darker skin color. Here are the same results, but from the near infrared videos. Um, general finding is that the pulse information also exists in uh, near infrared videos. Um, but comparing to the results from IGB video, um, larger error rates here are obtained. We took uh, some example cases with bigger errors in IGB. 
video, but better results from near infrared video as as shown here. One example. So we are thinking that actually near infrared data might be used as a complement for RGB since it works better for, uh, for example, here, the darker skin groups. We also run uh, the experiments to get uh, the heart rate variability features uh, here, and RF, the LF, HF, and HF divided by HF, the very typical uh, heart rate variability features. So the result shows that the heart rate variability feature measure are more, much more challenging than just average heart rate. The errors are uh, apparently larger uh, as we have expected. Near infrared data is useful, but with um, lower, clearly the lower performance. So how to fuse the result together to get more reliability results could be a future work. Actually, many interesting aspects were considered when we collecting this OBF data set, like uh, skin colors, age differences, excise uh, effects, uh, effective of the treatment of the AF patients, and so on. If you are interested about this topic, and actually there are lots of things can be explored with our data set. Then now uh, we are ready to move to deep learning based methods. Recently, there are several attempts to estimate heart rate remotely based on deep learning. But all of them have at least one of the drawbacks, such as, for example, they treat heart rate estimation as one stage average heart rate regression problem, and then lose the individual pulse peak information. So it's impossible to measure the heart rate variability features which indeed limits the usage. All some methods are not real end-to-end -end learning as inputs of networks are not the original face videos. So pre-processing steps or handcrafted features are still needed. As well, some method using uh, a usually designed based on two-dimensional spatial neural network without uh, considering the temporal context of the facial features. In this part, uh, I will talk about uh, mm, the two uh, recent work we have proposed regarding um, the uh, multitude heart rate activity measure, measurement from the videos. The first one is end-to-end -end spatial temporal networks. In this work, we split uh, the whole task into two stages. The first stage uh, is low-level analysis. That is uh, to measure the remote RPPG signals from face videos. So with the input facial videos, uh, we are aiming to design spatial temporal network end-to-end -end method to get attitude um, heartbeat curves as shown over here not just average heart rate, but the RPPG signals. In the second stage, that is for high-level analysis. So the measured RPPG signals can be uh, further um, uh, analyzed to get, for example, average heart rate or heart rate variability features to be further uh, used for, for example, the artery fibrillation detection or emotion recognition. 
Uh, as we knew, that was the first end-to-end -end spatial temporal network for RPPG signal measurement from raw facial videos. Uh, more important, it takes the temporal context into the context, which had been ignored in all the previous works. So here, uh, the middle part is uh, the key part. How to design this network and how to efficiently train the network? Here are the frameworks we have developed uh, for this purpose. Uh, we could have a, a simple look, for example, uh, this is uh, a simple uh, um, face net with 2D CNN. And this one is face net with 3D CNN. And these two um, just use the basic uh, uh, two-dimensional um, convolutional neural network uh, or the spatial temporal CNN to extract uh, the features. And uh, this one, the FISNET LSTM, uh, in this framework, uh, a 2D CNN is deployed to extract the spatial features firstly. And then the LSTM based module is exploited for propagating the spatial features in the temporal domain. Uh, which can improve the temporal contest features while forward backward information flows. Uh, and this one is FISNET 3D CNN ED, uh, which adopts three uh, by three by three convolutions to extract the semantic IPPG features in both spatial and temporal domains simultaneously. It helps to learn more robust contest features and recovered IPPG signals with less temporal fluctuation. And then, in spite of the successful leveraging encoder decoder, we also attempt a temporal encoder decoder in, um, for IPPG task, which intends to exploit more effective temporal contest and reduce the temporal redundancy and noise. A novel loss function uh, is designed to maximize the trend similarity and minimize the peak location errors. And this novel loss function is based on piercing, negative piercing correlation. Here, the T is the length of the signals, and X is predicted IPPG signals, and Y indicates the ground truth PPG signals. In the experiments, two benchmark datasets, OBF dataset, as we have introduced in the last part, and the Mahamnoba HCI dataset are utilized. In OBF dataset, uh, the 200 5 minutes IP in IGB videos from the healthy adults are used, and uh, 527 facial videos from 27 subjects from Mahanob HC dataset are utilized. Here we can have a look of the um, result. Uh, in this table, uh, there are heart average heart rate results and uh, heart rate variability results on OBF dataset. Mm, and the FISNET 3D CNN with uh, ED um, got uh, the best result comparing the previous methods. As well, mm, the measured heart rate variability features are further uh, exploited to uh, recognize emotions on Mahanob HCI dataset. And uh, the violence, arousal, and night classes emotions um, are recognized with um, the measured heart rate as high level tasks. 
Um, um, the other um, work uh, I'm, I'm now um, introducing uh, is um, for um, the heart rate measure from highly compressed facial videos. Uh, so, uh, as we know, uh, for the heart rate measure from videos, uh, um, they are very subtle skin color changes need to be detected uh, and uh, so that's why uh, in many cases it requires high quality videos it asks the participant to keep still it asks to keep anything unchanged but if we consider the remote communication so videos are transmitted in the internet uh, it's very hard to transmit the original uncompressed high quality video sequences. It would be very slow and would not be practical for real time uh, interaction. And uh, highly compressed facial videos uh, are commonly used considering the remote, uh, the online. Uh, internet uh, interaction, uh, realistic scenarios, for example. But uh, in the highly compressed videos, such kind of uh, um, relevant, uh, very subtle skin color changes might also be compressed. So it brings additional, very huge challenges for the remote heart rate measurement. So before we started our work, and as we knew, there were no any method who would work in highly compressed video sequence for getting reliable heart rate. And not to mention the heart rate variability, the bit-to-bit -bit information. So we have proposed a lot end-to-end -end deep learning solution with video enhancement. That is the first attempt to counter the video compression loss and to recover IPPG signals from the highly compressed videos. And let's see, and the upper figure shows uh, the ground truth and they uh, measure the heart rate from videos in the highly compressed video. So we see. Uh, the peaks are largely deviated from the real peaks uh, obtained from ECG as ground truth. So with that, it's hard for us to 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 use uh, that wrong peaks for um, realistic applications in medical purpose, for example. And with our um, um, method. So from the quality enhanced video, and we see the recovered peak now is very well aligned to the true peaks and increase the reliability of the method to the real applications. In this method and in this work, there are two key part. The first part is a spatial temporal video enhancement network for video enhancement, the first part, to get an enhanced video that is much better for recovering the IPPG signals. And the second part is IPPG net for IPPG signal recovering go to a closer look. For the sake of enhancing the quality of highly compressed videos, we propose this video-to-video -video generator called Steven Spatial Temporal Video Enhancement Networks. And here, see, is the video of the compressed video with the length of D. 
Our goal here is to train a generator G that can enhance the quality of the compressed video. And uh, so the distribution of the enhanced video is identical or as similar as possible to the original video. For that, we introduce the reconstruction loss and the cycle loss. The IPPG net has three key components. The first one is the spatial temporal convolutional network. The previous works usually projected the spatial pooled IGB into another color space for better representation. Then the temporal context-based normalization used to get rid of irrelevant info. Here we merge these two steps into one model and propose this end-to-end -end network. And the second key component is skin segmentation and attention. That is to adaptively select the skin regions. Since various skin regions have varying density degrees of blood vessels, as well as by physical parameter maps. Thus, they contribute at different levels for RPPG signal measurement. And the third part is the partition constraints for learning a better RPPG feature representation. These two, Steven and RPPG net, these two networks can be jointly trained. So we can firstly print train Steven and RPPG net. And after that, the parameters of RPPG net that is considered as high level task are fixed. And then just the lower level task with Steven are, are, are updated. Here again, we use these two benchmark data sets, OBF data set and the Mahanob HCI data set for the experiments. OBF data set are compressed in MPEG-4 with average bit read around 20,000 KB per second. And these videos were further compressed with uh, average bit read uh, as 1,500 and 250 KB per second, Y3 codex, unpack for X264 and X265. For Mahanob HC added set, um, the videos are compressed in um, H.264. The average bit rate uh, is around 4,200 KB per second. Here the figure shows the result uh, with um, the different compression rate and uh, with the different uh, method and uh, RPPG net uh, um, is our method. So uh, from the result we can see um, firstly Mm, with the higher compression rate uh, for both the traditional method and deep learning method, uh, they all um, get a larger average of the average heart, heart rate as expected. And uh, then uh, we can also clearly see that uh, with our method, uh, we got the much better result outperforming all the other previous methods, in the high, especially in the highly compressed video sequences. Here, for example, the 250 uh, bit rate. When we uh, joined train Steven uh, and uh, RPPG net, the result can be further enhanced. Uh, as shown here, uh, that is jointly trained Steven and PPG net. Uh, and here, uh, in the coarsely um, tested in the different um, codec, codec compre compressed videos. 
uh, as well, uh, we have experimented to uh, um, test the general the generalization capability. Uh, so for Mahanob HCI, it doesn't have original uh, high quality video sequences. So uh, we pre-train the Steven with OBF dataset and concatenate it with the pre-trained IPPG net in, uh, in Mahanob HCI dataset. Uh, and uh, uh, we did testing then on the Mahanob dataset. Uh, so here, um, the Steven plus IPPG net shows the substantial an improvement out of performing uh, the early handcrafted and also deep learning method. This is the input uh, video uh, and uh, here is the image shows the predicted attention map and uh, it, it gives us some information of the important uh, areas in, in, in the face part so which contribute more for the heart rate measure, which indeed could be further uh, investigated in the future. Uh, after uh, we uh, talking about a different method, uh, now I think it's good we um, take atrial fibrillation as a an, an use case to see how we can use the remotely measured heart rate for uh, a real application. Uh, the traditional approach, as we know, requires to put specific sensors on the body uh, and utilize uh, the biomedical device for capturing ECG signals. So uh, we, um, in this work, explored to detect artery fibrillation from remotely measured heart rate uh, by fusing RPP signals extracted from different regions on the face area. Uh, this is the first study to achieve the AF detection using learning-based strategy by analyzing just the remotely contactless face videos. And the videos are just captured by the normal cameras. We could uh, achieve uh, Mm, the contactless manner for the atrial fibrillation detection, which would be very convenient to, to implement in daily life. And uh, the figure here shows uh, the heart rate for healthy individual and for the AF patients. The upper row shows the PPG measured from uh, remote videos and the, the lower row shows uh, the heart rate signals from original ECG. We could see the irregular heart rate uh, in the AF patients and each this kind of irregularity can also be got out from remote measured RPPG signals. Here is the framework in the proposed method. So uh, for the face videos, uh, uh, and the face area can be divided into many RORs. Uh, various RPPG uh, algorithms um, are utilized to um, capture the pulse information from different ROR regions on the face videos. And after that, we investigated the biomedical uh, statistical method to extract the suitable features from each pulse signal that is the heart rate variability features. Then we proposed a feature fusion algorithm by learning projection matrix to select and combine 
the uh, reasonable information from multiple uh, physiological features uh, of different face areas. In the training, uh, the video clips from 20 healthy subjects and 20 AF patients are randomly selected. And in the testing, uh, the other uh, 10 healthy subjects and the 10 AF patients are randomly chose as a testing site. And the experiments are independently repeated 10 times. Uh, in the figure, we show the results and the comparison with other methods uh, with, res uh, with respect to sensi uh, sensitivity, specificity, and accuracy. The proposed algorithm achieves over 92% accuracy on the data set. That is only about 4% lower compared with the state-of-the-art result from Golden Standard ECG. So that shows the potential of the remote heart rate measure uh, with multitude bit to bit information for atrial fibrillation detection and even other medical uses in future. So now we move to the summary. And uh, what we talked today uh, regarding the heart rate measure from video analysis is not to replace the professional device like our ECG in hospital. That the main purpose is to make our cameras smarter. A camera that can see inside and count our heartbeat. The smart camera then can help in many aspects. For example, in the effective computing, it can then monitor the change of affective states with less wires. So we could read the facial expressions. We could get the body movement. And now we also can get the heart rate from just videos. It gives another modality information for the emotion analysis. It can be used in the game playing, for example. For example, here, as shown in this figure, and uh, it shows the heart rate measured by using uh, one of our methods. Uh, as you show here, these green curves, this bl uh, black curve is from the ground truth. The error rate, the mean error rate, is just around 1.8%. So the subject's heart rate changes as the content of the game progresses. We believe it can be used for analysis, for example, about the player's experience, can help improve the game design in future. As well. As well, the smart camera can help for monitoring and understanding human behaviors in um, line detection, in the interrogation. Uh, other possible usage could be uh, uh, for biometrics, uh, the face anti-spoofing systems to detect the face now show up in front of camera is from a real people or from something else. Or oh, we could use our method to reanalyze the existing videos to see, for example, if people was lying at that time. And regarding that anti-spoofing, and here actually there are already some uh, works using the heart rate, remotely measure the heart rate. For example, this is one of our work in RCPR. So we got the RPPG uh, signals from RGB channels, uh, respectively. And after temporal filtering and FFT, 
uh, we got uh, the uh, frequency and uh, some feature vectors from the frequency uh, uh, utilized and fed to the SVM uh, to be categorized into real people or the fake or fake face. Uh, that's the motivation is that um, in nowadays the smart uh, face recognition system uh, actually there should be uh, one step before uh, the uh, real face recognition and uh, it should detect if the face is from real face or from fake face since people for example can show a picture of another people in front of the camera, show a recorded video, or even wear a well-made mask of another people to fool the system. But if it's printed in paper, in, in, in a paper uh, from device, or if people wear a mask, so they all are not a uh, real skin, and uh, the heart rate. Uh, we, a reasonable heart rate couldn't be detected from these fake faces. And so that's why our method can be used for face anti spoofing. Uh, another work we have proposed uh, as well is to um, get the different face areas and to extract local IPPG information, um, analyze the correlation using the local IPPG correlation model, we could learn a confidence map to get a reliable area for IPPG. And this confidence matrix later be utilized together with the classifier for helping discriminate the input video sequence is from masked face or live face. This is a video demo shows how it works for face anti-spoofing. And this is a real face of our researcher. And it's a real face. And when a uh, face is from a pic picture, no reliable heart rate can be detected, it's fake. And again, a recorded video from a mobile device, and it's not a fake real face again. So that's how it works for the anti spoofing So today, we have talked about the methods and applications regarding the heart rate measure from videos. So we say it's possible heart rate can be measured from remote video analysis. And I have introduced some handcrafted method and deep learning based methods. OBF data set we have recently collected could be used for uh, evaluating the method, not only for average heart rate, but for multitude beat to beat interval heartbeat variability features, and can be used uh, for detecting atrial fibrillation uh, in medical um, use cases. The heart rate variability measure is much more valuable since. Uh, uh, it's considered as precise measurement of the heart rate activity. Um, together with other physiological signals, and they can be used in uh, normal uh, HCI scenario situations like uh, playing games, watching movies, and also um, can be used potentially for medical purpose like the atrial fibrillation detection with our OBF database that is now then possible. We have organized the first challenge on remote physiological signal sensing uh, with this year's CVPI. Here you can find the link and uh, some basic information. Uh, this challenge 
uh, was co-organized by our team and the team from uh, the Institute of Computing Technology Chinese Academy of Sciences. The training data uh, is randomly selected from a VIP LHRV2 dataset collected uh, by the Institute of Computing Technology, uh, our partner in this challenge. And the texting data of the challenging consists in two parts. Uh, 100 subjects from uh, the VRP LHR dataset and the 100 subjects from our OBF dataset. Here you can see the statistical information of these two datasets and uh, some uh, example uh, images from uh, the training and uh, um, testing data set. In this challenge, altogether 129 teams from uh, 36 organizations all over the world have been attracted and participated in uh, this challenge. So we hope more of you will join the topic and hope the existing work and the data and uh, this challenge can facilitate the study in the future. Thank you very much uh, for your time uh, and we could uh, discuss later in the Q8 session. Okay, thank you and bye. Uh, so now I ask if there is any question from the audience, they can write it down in the chat box. Well, it seems that, hey. Hi, Mohamed. How are you? Like I must be. <laughs> Good to see you and the other guys here. Yeah, thank you. So thank you very much for the uh, presentation. It was really nice, like always. So here we Thank have you. some questions from you. So we have a question here. Could you please introduce several public and free data sets for heart rate estimation tasks? Uh, uh, this is a very good question. And uh, so far, since this uh, topic is pretty new, and uh, there are not many, uh, so many publicly available data sets. And uh, one is what I uh, mentioned in the presentation that Mohamed, uh, Mohamed, Mohamed, no, it's a CI data set. Uh, even though that data set was not collected for this harder heart rate measure purpose, um, since for that data set, uh, it was collected with videos, face videos from different views and uh, some physiological signals, including ECG, uh, and when people watching a movie, uh, originally used planned for emotion, multimodal emotion analysis. But just because it has all the available uh, signals for this heart rate problem, like it has people's face videos, it has the ECG as ground truth. So, uh, it can be used for this heart, heart rate measure from various tasks. Uh, and uh, um, the second one um, is our OBF data set. Um, we have published the paper, published some results, but the part regarding the patient's data uh, cannot be publicly shared at the moment because of the privacy issue. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, it's understood, mm, and as well that data set I mentioned in uh, in um, for in the, almost the last slides our challenge we have uh, organized uh, VIPL heart rate um, data set collected by uh, the Institute of Computing Technology. Uh, that is uh, at least the, the the some some sessions are publicly available. So I believe those are the at the moment most commonly used for this problem. Okay, thank you very much. Thank so you. another question 
they say that uh, you mentioned the camera that can see inside people. It is needed, uh, it is indeed useful in medical situation, but also for surveillance. Also, you mentioned the potential use of the technology in the integration and lie detection. Is it a medical technology or surveillance control one? What can be done to ensure that this technique won't be used for control suppression or simply protecting privacy? So they ask, is it against the privacy or not? Mm -hmm. And let's see, for the first question, um, medical technology. And uh, surely, I believe for all of this, it should be used um, uh, in well control. And uh, for all of similar technology, I believe it should not be used just randomly. If we take medical use here, and uh, of course, like the artery fibrillation, we just take it as example. And we believe it can help uh, help our people to uh, uh, easily and in the early stage find the symptoms of the, of this uh, disease. Uh, like uh, if um, this has atrial fibrillation has high incidence, but it's very hard to catch it in early stage. Even people have some symptoms. Even people go to like talk with professional. Doctor, even we take a short time ECG, but in that short period, the heart rate can be just normal. And this abnormal patterns only appears just randomly some, some, um, like uh, sometimes. So just in case that professionally highly suspected, suspect and take a long term ECG, and then it's possible to find this. Uh, artery fibrillation problem. Mm -hmm. So with such kind of problem, such kind of, um, and with the technology, we expect it can help people, like everybody have your mobile phone, right? And we have cameras. And if the technology can be embedded there, and it's not used to detect other people's situation, but used to detect everyone's own situations, to check if the heart rate is normal, at this time, small time period. So especially when people have some suspect regarding his or her own health situation. And when it can be detected much frequently, and then we believe it can help to catch this disease in early stage. So always from this point of view, and we hope and believe that technology help and not to dig people's privacy. Okay, thank you. So thank you. another question, since cameras have dissimilarities in their color and illumination calibration, can, can your method result as the mentioned accuracy with devices that have a different cameras that have been used for building the data sets? It means the generalization of the data. Mm -hmm. Very good question. Very good question. And uh, so for the method, if we put them into um, firstly two big categories, and the one is for the um, uh, traditional handcrafted um, method, the other is kind of deep learning based method. And uh, for uh, first uh, uh, traditional handcrafted method, uh, um, actually it also has its own advantages. It doesn't need so big, uh, big data. And it's like uh, the first method I introduced. It's uh, training free. It doesn't need any training. And it's very well explainable. And for the second uh, big category and uh, deep learning based method, it needs lots of data. Uh, here, at least in, uh, for our uh, technology, we have did the experiments using uh, not just OBF data set. That's what we collected. And we also carry out experiments on like a Mahanob HC added set. And we did the course validation. So if uh, anybody is interested, I would like to refer you to those papers. And uh, I do, I did list them in, in on the bottom of some slides and you can easily find them. And there are very detailed introduction about the data set and the course validation, what we have done. 
Um, so at least in our data set, we noticed that uh, the technology, the method we developed has a pretty good generalization capability. And like it trained on OBF and it's tested on Mahanob. So it shows quite good and a much, um, very big improvement um, comparing to the previous method. But I, I, I do think that there is something we need to do more research, like the data. If we really consider very big um, data variations, especially consider illumination variations, and uh, I would say that's um, uh, illumination really affect a lot, really affect a lot. But the current data might not include so big uh, variation, var uh, illumination variations. So I think that it still needs lots of new research to check how robust and the current research is and how to deal with this problem if we really put it into the wild. And so far, the data set and the problem we consider are actually still in a kind of controlled situations. Even though we allow people to have some head movement, we allow there some background changes, we allow lighting conditions to change, but they all are not so big, not in real, like a wild, so wild situations. So if we move to really uncontrolled, uh, like a, can at any situation, as I believe that technology definitely have its like limitations. Okay. Thank you very much. And Thank here you. we have two redundant questions. I combine them together. So is there any other application for your method? For example, can it be used for some other disease to be diagnosed? Mm, there are many discussion going on. And we are thinking that um, anywhere, you, if you can consider anywhere that's uh, heart rate, uh, would be helpful. Uh, so I I give several examples in the presentation, but I believe there would be quite many more. Uh, like in the um, uh, surgery, and we 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 know that uh, we always like um, people in hospital need to always follow the patient's heart rate and other um, uh, like physiological signals. And uh, perhaps sometimes they don't care about uh, the details like ECG, but they care about uh, very sudden changes uh, that may indicate some serious um, uh, happenings in the surgery, just for example. And uh, there could be quite many other things. Uh, so, uh, so wherever this heart rate is considered useful, I believe then such kind of technology without the contact, it definitely has its value, has its value. Perhaps it needs as well the people's, uh, it just used to assist professionals, to assist the doctors and the nurses to make the final, more accurate judgment. But it always can work as a first screening or first step to give some warning or give some like a prior information. Yes, that's correct. And I think that even it has some application in my work in pain intensity estimation and these things that we have, we can use it as other modalities for the uh, pain assessment. Thank you. So the last question that we have here, is it possible to predict both EEG and ECG signals from facial information and emotions, or it may be become too complicated? because EEG is more invasive, and this would be a great option for EEG. Uh -huh. And um, from face values for EEG, EEG is about the brain, brain activity. And um, to my best knowledge, they, they are uh, very little research about that, and uh, mostly uh, still need some uh, like uh, Mm, sensor, some contact sensors. But uh, I, I wouldn't uh, say ab absolutely no, because nobody knows with the development of different technology and then it, it, it could be possible. Like heart rate, if we talk about it 10 years ago, even uh, even nowadays when I talk about it, okay, we develop some technology which can measure your heart rate without putting any sensors, just uh, 
a camera capturing your video, still many people thought, okay, is it really possible? Is it magic? But it, such kind of work has been there for uh, about 10 years. But 10 years ago, and I, I think that nobody thought, okay, it's possible. How could it, po for, how could it be possible? So for EEG, even though there is um, no such kind of work, just from your, your face, we get your brain activity. But I, uh, I wouldn't say uh, it's not possible. It could be. It could be. And let's see if we really can do that. And of course, a lot of new applications just open its doors. And not just for emotional uh, stuff, but also for cognition, because brain activity is more related to people's cognition capability. Uh -huh. And uh, then I believe together with many other information, ECG and uh, face, body gesture, it definitely has a very huge value. Okay, thank you very much. And if there is any other question, please write it down here. And if there is no question, we again thank you very much for your time and the impressive uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, could I make an advertisement here? Sure. <laughs> and, uh, at the moment, we have uh, two positions open in our group. And uh, so we welcome uh, postdoctoral researchers, or uh, PhD students, applications. And the topic is about facial expression um, and neural network learning. So if anybody are interested, please feel free to contact. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Thank have you very a much. Nice evening. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. OK, now that uh, we had our first speaker, very nice speech, we go for the rest for 30 minutes short and we will be back for the second speech thank you very much <laughs>